Hi everybody Indira Nooyi is one of the most inspirational business leaders in the world and it is so hard to believe that a girl with no extraordinary background went from being an ordinary girl from South India to becoming the chief executive officer of the largest beverage company in the world which we all know today as Pepsi and this is a very very big deal because we are talking about a time in industry that was so male dominated that every single one of the top 15 positions was held by a man in 1994 Even the most accomplished women were stuck at middle management. And guess what? The number of female CEOs among the 500 biggest companies was practically zero. But even then, this incredible woman did not just break through these walls and became the chief executive officer of PepsiCo, but also took the company to such great heights that under her tenure, PepsiCo saw its revenue grow by more than 80% and added a new billion dollar brand almost every other year. On top of that, the company also gave back 79.4 billion dollars to its shareholders in the form of dividends and share repurchases. Which is why in this Women's Day special episode, let's try to understand what exactly was so special about Mrs. Indira Nooyi. How did she beat all the odds to become one of the most powerful women in the world? And most importantly, what are the business lessons that we need to learn from this incredible woman? This video is brought to you by Vested, but more on this at the end of the video. This is a story that dates back to March 1994 when Mrs. Indira Nooyi walked into PepsiCo. During this time, PepsiCo was a three-legged stool. The first leg was beverages which included Pepsi Cola, Diet Pepsi and Mountain Dew with an annual revenue of 9 billion dollars. The second leg was snacks which included Lay's, Doritos, Cheetos with an annual revenue of 7 billion dollars. And the third leg was that of restaurants like Pizza Hut, Taco Bell and KFC with an annual revenue of 9 billion dollars. But when Mrs. Nooyi came in, she observed that the third leg had began to shake and the problem was with the basic organization structure that is these brands that is pizza hut taco bell and kfc operated as three individual companies and in a way they started cannibalizing each other's businesses each of these companies had their own individual revenue targets and in the race of meeting these targets there were three problems that emerged number 1 if there was a prime location that was available to set up a restaurant taco bell and pizza hut started competing for that space if there was a job fair all these three brands had their own recruitment team they were recruiting for the same pool of candidates and after a certain point they started fighting for the same candidates and lastly PepsiCo often used the restaurant business as a testing ground for talent. So if you came into the restaurant wing and you did well, PepsiCo used to take you in. So in a way, great talent was being sucked out by PepsiCo and talent retention in the restaurant space became a very big problem. So you know what guys, due to the advice of Mrs. Indira Nooyi, the CEO of PepsiCo decided to spin off all these three brands that is KFC, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell into a different entity called Tricon Global Restaurants as a result of a spin out of the fast food division of PepsiCo. And mind you, Mrs. Indira did not propose this merely by looking at the balance sheet or through some fancy analysis. She literally went on ground and spent 3 days to visit across Atlanta, Chicago and Washington. And in this trip, the then CEO and Mrs. Nooyi stopped at every quick service restaurant to eat something or the other. And during this entire process, they maintained a scorecard and ranked each restaurant on multiple criteria like order time, wait time, food temperature and cleanliness. And only after looking at both the micro and macro parameters did she suggest the spin-off. So finally, in 1997, PepsiCo elected to spin off its Pizza Hut, KFC and Taco Bell restaurants for 4.5 billion dollars. And eventually, the company used this money to slash its 8.5 billion dollar debt by more than 50%. This gave PepsiCo very very good financial flexibility to invest in further business development. This is how through critical micro and macro analysis, Mrs. Indira relieved PepsiCo of a huge burden that was crumbling the organization because of bad structure. And this brings me to the second and perhaps the most important contribution of Mrs. Nooyi and that was defining a purpose for PepsiCo. Because this is what the dark side of soft drink industry looks like. It's a shocking truth. 60 pounds. That's how much sugar American adults consume each year. That was me just over a year and 105 pounds ago. Now if I can lose weight, anyone can.
Now, if you look at it from the business standpoint, you obviously cannot abandon your best selling product. But being such a giant organization, what you can do is start pivoting to alternatives to transition without actually going bankrupt. Which is why in 2010, Mrs. Nui declared that Pepsi needed to be a part of the solution to one of the biggest public health challenges and that is obesity. So all PepsiCo products were classified into three discrete segments. The first segment was the fun for you segment which included products such as potato chips and regular soda. The second segment was better for you segment which were diet or low fat versions of snacks and fizzy drinks. And then we had the good for you segment wherein there were products like Quaker Oats Meal. So under her direction, Pepsi started decreasing its portions in the fun for you products and started increasing its focus on the good for you products. And this classification made it so clear to the organization that they were able to fix some of the most fundamental marketing messages of their products. For example, the marketing campaign of diet products were not promoted as aspirationally as its full sugar equivalents. So they redefined the message to push the products that are good for the world instead of just the sugared products. Similarly, another major marketing glitch was that Gatorade, which was an energy drink, was marketed as an everyday recreational beverage. And for those who are involved in fitness and nutrition, you would know that having a Gatorade without working out is nothing short of a disaster for your health. And this marketing was done because obviously the customer base of regular soft drinkers was way bigger than the athletes. But under the guidance of Mrs. Indira Nui, it was made sure that the advertisement be strictly for athletes and never be presented as an everyday recreational beverage. Now, had it been some ordinary CEO, they would have never done that. Why? Because by default, when you shrink your customer base, your profits are going to shrink. But Mrs. Nui was no ordinary CEO. She did not just want PepsiCo to be a giant company. She wanted it to be a good company. This was the power of instilling a purpose within the organization and striking a balance between capitalism and consciousness. And this brings me to the third and my personal favorite contribution of Mrs. Nui and that was to incorporate something called design thinking in Pepsi. For those who don't know, design thinking is one of the most important skills of the 21st century that teaches you how to empathize with the set of audience and eventually it gives you some game changing market insights to help you build great products. In this case, Mrs. Nui realized that there was a very very big flaw in the way Pepsi was marketing its products for women. because. These marketeers often followed something called a shrink it or pink it approach. What this means is that if marketers wanted to sell something to women, they would just take the same products that were made for men and shrink it as in make it smaller or pink it as in make it pink. So if they wanted to sell Doritos, they would just put it in a pink bag and say that it's for women. But this is where Mrs. Nui got in design thinking experts to teach their executives design thinking and empathy skills so that the executives could actually look beyond shrink it and pink it. And within no time, the executives of Pepsi realized that there's a lot more to how women like to snack. So when they actually started to conduct these exercises, they were able to know those intricacies of women behavior with snacks that were completely overlooked by conventional designers. For example, they observed that when men finish their snacks, they would just pour all their leftovers in their mouth. But women were very less likely to do that. Why? because they often worried about how much the product may stain if it fell on their dress. And they wouldn't even rub it on the chair, which a lot of guys were more likely to do. Similarly, they noted that women in public places were more conscious while snacking as compared to men. So they introduced a stacked up chip that comes in a plastic tray. So if a woman wants to snack, she could just open the drawer, eat a snack and then just push it back in. And they even made the chips crunch less noisy because they found out that a lot of women did not want people to hear them crunching away. This is how Mrs. Nui inculcated the skill of design thinking in PepsiCo so that they could build products based on empathy and not stereotypes. And needless to say, design thinking is now an essential element in the product philosophy of PepsiCo. These were some of the most important contributions made by Mrs. Indira Nui that redefined the way PepsiCo functioned as an organization. Apart from that, under her, PepsiCo aggressively expanded into international territories because of which, by 2017, nearly 21% of PepsiCo's revenue came from Asia, North Africa, Middle East and Latin America. In 2015, the company slashed the overall water use in its operation by about 3.2 billion litres in a drive towards improving water conservation. And in doing so, they also ended up saving $80 million in production costs. This is how Mrs. Nui's innovative ideas and overall success got her flooded with awards and recognition from all across the world. Every year between 2007 to 2014, 
Forbes listed her in its world's 100 most powerful women. She was named number one on Fortune's annual ranking of the most powerful women in business from 2006 to 2010. And in 2008, the US News and World Report itself named Mrs. Nui as one of the best leaders America had. And finally, in 2018, Mrs. Nui announced that she would be stepping down as the CEO of PepsiCo, ending her iconic career with the company. And this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that are the lessons to learn from the legendary Indira Nui. Before we move on, I want to quickly tell you about Vested. People, wouldn't it be great if you could invest in the growth stories of companies like Pepsi, Amazon, Google, Netflix and other US companies? Well, this is where Vested comes in. Vested is a 100% digital, easy, fast, reliable and transparent application that simplifies investing in the US stock market. Vested has features like advanced charting, pre-built portfolios and Vested trends that shows you the most trending companies among Vested users. The best part about Vested is zero commission investing and lowest INR to USD conversion fee in the market through their Vested Direct feature. And you can open an account in just a few minutes using this app. So if this sounds useful to you, download the Vested app using the special link in the description. Vested is currently running a special offer wherein, if you fund your account using the link below, you will get an additional $10 bonus. Moving on, the first lesson that we need to learn from Mrs. Indira Nui is that, while good leaders right away focus on expansion and in creating new assets for the company, great leaders first cut down the assets that are liabilities in disguise. In this case, Mrs. Nui cut down the weight of Pizza Hut, KFC and Taco Bell so that, PepsiCo could focus on its core business rather than bear the burden of the non-core business. In fact, even when Steve Jobs came to Apple in 1997, this was the first thing that he did. Lesson number two, even if you're selling soft drinks, instilling a sense of purpose within the organization can give you invaluable benefits. Now on the outside, it might look like some useless philosophy to you, but if you look closely, all the billion dollar acquisitions made by PepsiCo, including Quaker Oats, were actually guided by this purpose of good for you products that Mrs. Nui established in PepsiCo. And lastly, design thinking is one of the most important skills of the 21st century that could change the way you design products and can give you some game changing results within no time. In this case, we saw how design thinking gave rise to new products by PepsiCo merely because of conducting empathy exercises with women. So do look into it and for reference, please read this book called Change by Design by Tim Brown. And before we say goodbye, I just want to wish each girl and woman watching this episode a very, very happy Women's Day. That's all from my side to today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.